everyone. So today I'm going to share with you guys today, baby Camden's birth story. So I really had this vision of holding him while I was sharing his birth story, <laughs> but y'all, he has been rather fussy today and he's asleep and he's going to stay there. <laughs> I'm like, I am not touching him or moving him right now because he needs some sleep. And it was a lot of work to get him there. <laughs> so first and foremost, I want to share or say a huge thank you to you guys for all of your precious comments and congratulations and messages. They truly mean the world to me. I always try to respond to comments, but there's so many, like it's, I just can't, I don't have that kind of time to sit there and respond to every single one. But I want to say a huge thank you to every single one of you. I have read them all and all, all of you guys are just very precious to me. So thank you very much. So before I get into his birth story, I want to say at the end of this, I am going to answer. I had a few um, commonly asked questions amongst all those comments and stuff that I will address at the end. But first, we will get into his birth story. So y'all have seen his birth vlog, and I actually had a vlog um, where I went into labor. So y'all have seen a lot of this. Now, granted, there are a lot of details that I just can't obviously capture on camera or anything like that. But I thought it was hilarious, y'all, because on my due date, so yes, he was born on my due date. Like I literally went into labor on my own on my due date, which is just kind of amazing to me. So I'm thinking I'm going to vlog. This is my due date vlog. Like baby's not coming. It's my due date. Like, <laughs> And I had planned on doing a 40 week pregnancy update because I had my doctor's appointment the day before. <laughs> and was just going to update you guys on all of that stuff because I did not think I was going to go into labor. Like I really thought I was going to go past my due date, maybe a week past my due date. I had actually scheduled an induction with my doctor for the following Wednesday. I had tried to do it on a Thursday and my doctor was like, well, I actually have a lot of conferences that day. Can we do Wednesday? Um, and I agreed. So I really did not want to be induced. So I'm very thankful that I did go into labor on my own. But if y'all have not seen the birth, uh, the birth vlog or the vlog that I think I titled it the vlog that started labor or something like that, I will link those in the description box below. So see those and I'm going to fill in all the details that obviously weren't captured. So like I said, on my due date, I'm going about my day. I'm thinking I'm just going to vlog kind of like a, hey, it's my due date, but nothing's happening type thing. Okay. That day, I did have some symptoms and some signs that were labor-ish, but I have kind of had those off and on. Um, so I really didn't think too much of it. I was kind of crampy, but again, I had been like this too. It did seem a little bit more significant. I had to make a few trips to the restroom, if y'all know what I mean. That's part of the thing, one of the things that my body does whenever it's preparing for labor is it starts to clean itself out but that wasn't overwhelmingly bad okay i had this again like a few days prior and i did kind of alert nathan um because he's at work and ain't nothing came of it so that's kind of what i was thinking so again just going about my day i actually had scheduled a chiropractor appointment that morning because um i was having those really bad intense ligament pains i had like no sleep the night before because it literally maybe they were contractions now that i'm thinking like <laughs> <laughs> reliving this. I was up the whole night the night before with sharp stabbing pains underneath my belly in the typical ligament, you know, pain area. I was up a lot and they were extremely painful. So I had called the chiropractor that morning was like, Hey, can I happen to get in this afternoon? They said, yes, no problem. So I was going to go at 4 30 that afternoon. So it's just kind of hilarious. So in the afternoon time, I had really, I thought to myself, I was like, oh, I should really, I really want to lay down and take a nap, which is kind of what I've been doing every day, being so pregnant, laying down and resting. I was like, you know what? I should really prep dinner because I'm going to be gone. So I, I was going to leave out chicken. Nathan, you know, has no problem cooking or anything like that, but I wanted to make broccoli rice and cheese casserole <laughs> for the kids and Nathan to have, you know, while I was gone on my chiropractor appointment. Anyways, <laughs> so I'm prepping this casserole, y'all. Okay. And I kind of was like walking, I, you know, I'm cooking in the kitchen. It was two o'clock, like on the dot. And I had this pain and I'm like, oh, 
that didn't feel, so, that was a lot of pressure. That didn't really feel so good. And I'm kind of like walking about cooking, you know, I'm like focused on what I'm trying to do. I was like, wait a second. I think that was a contraction. So I have had tons of Braxton Hicks contractions. I've had tons of contractions. I've had tons of pressure. Okay. But there is a difference. There is such a difference. And I don't, <laughs> I don't know how to describe it. Okay. Like I said, I've had all these pains for weeks. Okay. Um, but this, I was like, oh, that's like the real thing. Like it just hits you when you're actually experiencing it. Like it's a real thing. Okay. So I was pretty sure. So I'm continuing cooking and getting this casserole going. Okay. Then I had another one. I was like, okay, but they weren't super close together. Okay. They were about 20, 25 minutes apart, sometimes 15 minutes, but the pain was like a, a contraction, but there was so much pressure with it. Like, okay. These were contractions that were doing something not. Okay. So all the books, doctors tell you, wait till your contractions are five minutes apart before you go to the hospital. If I had done that, I would have delivered in the car. Okay. <laughs> I'm just saying, because Nathan even was like, whenever he did end up coming home, these contractions aren't super close together. I'm like, these are contractions that are doing something we have got to go. Um, and I did have this actually with Drew, like my contractions were super far apart. I'm totally getting off track anyways, but they were contractions that did something. There is just, there is a huge difference. You mamas know what I'm saying. So anyways, in my vlog, I'm share, I shared some of this, but I was also like, I didn't share a ton because I was kind of freaking out that this is actually it. And was also wanting to make sure that this was actually it because you always have that like voice behind, behind you saying like, maybe this isn't it anyways. So I told myself I would give it an hour. I hadn't eaten lunch, so I sat down, ate lunch, was watching the clock, and I was still having them, and it had reached an hour. So Nathan gets off work at 3.30. Told you this started at 2 o'clock on the dock. So I told myself if at 3 o'clock I was still experiencing this, I was going to call Nathan. Because that would be an hour of a consistent thing, okay? So I did. I called Nathan. I think I called him like around 3.10. I was like, hey, so um, I need you to come home. <laughs> and he's like, okay, well... He was like, are you going into labor? I was like, yeah. And he was like, well, I get off at 3.30. That's perfect. I was like, no, 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 no. There ain't no wait, no more 20 minutes. You need to come home now. And he's like, what? Like, cause normally like I have those signs ahead of time where it, it's like slowly progressing. Um, but this was like, I think I was having those signs, but I just didn't realize it. Or I had been having those laborish signs for so many days that anyways, so at my doctor's appointment, like I said, the day before, I, my doctor did check me and I was still three centimeters. So I was three centimeters two weeks prior and then three centimeters the day before I actually had him. But there was just a difference in these contractions, okay? Again, not super close together. They never got like super close together. So Nathan did. He immediately came home and we were at the, so like I said, I called him at 310. We were at the hospital at four o'clock, okay? So he literally came home. I had my suitcase out in the driveway. <laughs> he barely, he didn't change his clothes, nothing. Like he normally, he works outside. So he normally comes home, showers and changes his clothes. Um, he didn't do any of that. And then it even did say to him, I was like, you probably have a time for a very quick shower. And I mean a very quick shower. He was like, it's fine. I was like, do you at least want to change your clothes? He was like, no, let's just go. So we just left. So I started vlogging on the way to the hospital and that's part of the birth vlog. So just to kind of explain the videos. So we get to the hospital and Nathan even said, he's like, do you want me to drop you off at the front? Do you think that you can walk? And I was like, well, I was like, yeah, I think I can walk. And then like I had another couple contractions and in the birth vlog, you can see Nathan was like, your contractions are only like 20 minutes apart. I'm like, but again, these are doing something. So Nathan actually did drop me off at the front. And as I'm getting out of the truck, I had a really good contraction. So he went and got a wheelchair. Um, helped me get in the wheelchair and then wheeled me to labor and delivery triage. So I get into labor and delivery triage and I'm like, <laughs> so the nurses are coming in. I was like, okay, this is baby number 11. I was three centimeters yesterday. The, I'm having contractions, but these are like real contractions that are doing something. And they were like, okay. And they literally were like, do you have to go to the bathroom? I was like, I no, not really. And they were like, okay, here's a gown. Like I just changed right there because there's like, was like no time. Cause I was like, I want an epidural. They were like, okay. Um, so they could tell too, like they ended up getting the monitors on me. Um, 
but everything was kind of like a whirlwind. Like I think there was four or five nurses there. And then they ended up wheeling me in the triage bed into just a room. And as they're wheeling me in there and there's other nurses in the delivery room, they were like, this is baby or G11 is what they, you know, all say. This is G11. Why on earth was she sent to triage? So it was, it wasn't really like I was sent to triage. Like they kind of checked me in at triage and then they immediately took me to the delivery room. Anyways, but I was like, y'all to the nurses, I really, really want an epidural. I was so scared it was not going to happen. And I literally was praying Lord, please just slow everything down just a little bit and let me get the epidural. And I even like had like made peace in my mind. Okay, if I don't get the epidural, I can do this. I can do this because everything was going so much fast. So, so fast. I was so scared. <laughs> and so I'm in the triage bed and they're butting it up to the delivery bed. And they're like, can you move? I was like, no. <laughs> so I waited a few more minutes and slowly inched my way half rolling, half inching, half nurses pulling me into the delivery bed. One nurse says, and I told them, I was like, I know I need a full bag of fluids before I can get the epidural. Like, go ahead. That's actually the remnants of my bruise. Can y'all see that? Anyways, um, and I can't get that off. I guess I need to get some fingernail polish remover or something. Anyways, the band-aid sticky stuff. So I, um, <laughs> so I had literally a nurse working on this arm and my veins kept blowing because I was, I was really dehydrated because I had not had much water. Anyways, and I told them, I was like, if y'all can just keep going, like, <laughs> just somebody get a vein going. Um, they blew two or three veins in this arm, but I didn't bruise on this side. So they finally got it in my hand. And I told them that that's usually where they end up having to get it on me is in my hand, which is kind of annoying because the way it's taped, but whatever. They have to do it. So they first had tried here. This, y'all, was huge. I mean, it was huge and like black. So this is actually looking really good. <laughs> so again, not the nurse's fault. Like I was just really dehydrated. So I had two nurses working on me, trying to get an IV. Another nurse trying to do all the paperwork, asking me all these questions. I was like, I have nothing. I have no medical history. I have no allergies. I have nothing. Sign off on everything. I want an epidural. <laughs> like, okay. Anyways, they finally got the IV, like I said, in my hand. And they said, We'll put it on a fast drip and they went ahead and called the anesthesiologist. That woman is absolutely beautiful, y'all. <laughs> so she comes in. I was on a fast drip for the fluids. Um, ended up getting the epidural. And again, I was like, I was scared that it wasn't even going to take in time. So they had checked me. I don't think they had actually checked me again. They didn't check me again until after the epidural. And it took a little bit. It felt like it took forever. It probably didn't, but it did feel like it took forever to actually get, like with the anesthesiologist in there and getting the epidural and all that. Um, but I was having such intense contractions too. Like I think that they had to wait for part of it. Anyways, got the epidural, praise the Lord. I got the epidural and it worked, okay? It was fabulous and I'm so very thankful. <laughs> Which is kind of funny because I think to myself, had I like, it probably would have been like an hour of intense pain and then everything would have been over with, but that's an hour of intense pain y'all. Anyway, so <laughs> they come in. Um, so they got me laying down. I could still feel a lot on my left side and it was actually where I was having those intense ligament pains. So I don't know. I don't know. Um, so from previous experience, I laid on my left side knowing that that would hopefully help the medicine, you know, get that spot um, to stop hurting. Well, it did not. And the nurses kept checking on me. I mean, the nurses didn't leave. And that's honestly partly why I didn't vlog a ton of the labor process. It really was very short, honestly. Like I said, we got there at four and he was born at seven. So it was three hours. An hour of it was, you know, getting the fluids, getting IVs, getting the epidural and all of that. But the nurses did not leave my side because of how fast everything was progressing. And I'm not going to vlog while nurses are in there. I, I don't know. I just kind of feel funny about it. So anyways, they did call the anesthesiologist back in. Um, and she did give me another bolus. Um, but she said, well, you're having more of a hot spot than like your full left side. So she was like, I mean, I know it stinks, but that's better than... It's not necessarily that the epidural isn't working. You just have this one spot of pain, but it felt like it was a really big spot of pain. <laughs> anyway, so 
At this point, so the anesthesiologist left um, after giving me another bolus. And I actually had full function of my legs. Like this was a really good epidural besides that hot spot um, the whole time. And I hit that button probably five or six times, y'all. <laughs> and my legs never went completely out. Like I had good range of motion and stuff, which I did like that, but no pain besides pressure and that hot spot. So now at this point, I have two nurses in with me and they were like, you know, we just did this class. It was a spinning babies class. Let, let's try something on you. So I had been laying on my left side. So she was like, can you scoot a little bit more to the edge of the bed? And so I did. And they actually lifted my right leg. So almost like a scissor motion, but then have my leg go out some. And she's holding my body from not falling off the bed. And as soon as she did that, that hot spot immediately went away. And I had no pain there whatsoever. And it was absolutely amazing. And the nurses laughed. Actually, it was my midwife and the nurse. It wasn't two nurses. And they laughed and they were like, we were just joking in class. We will never use this. And I was like, oh, y'all, this was amazing because, and that hot spot never came back. I pretty much stayed right there on my side the, um, until it was time to deliver. And my midwife had, you know, was checking on me and she's like, honestly, if I broke your water, you'd probably have this baby in 10 minutes. Do you want me to go ahead and break your water? I was like, hey, can I just have like a few minutes to rest? Because this had all been, you know, progressively just going and was super fast and all of that. And she was like, yeah, that's fine. So she left me for a few minutes. Um, I don't even know. It, it wasn't even 20, 30 minutes. She did break my water. Um, and I was like nine centimeters and they were like, okay. So the midwife actually left. And then the nurse again was still staying by me and she was having me bear down some to help bring the baby down a little bit. So at this point I was getting super nervous and very overwhelmed and anxious because of the sonograms that I've had and saying that he's a big baby. He has a big head. Honestly, in all of my deliveries, I've never had to push for that long. And that's always been a huge fear of mine is to push for two hours, three hours, whatever. That just sounds like absolute torture to me. And I have never had this experience, even with our first baby. Um, and I just looked at Nathan. He's holding my hand. I was like, I'm scared. And he's like, everything's going to be okay. Everything's going to be okay. And I think it was more the nurse having me bear down to push the baby down some that was kind of freaking me out. I want to say I had that happen with Kinley. I don't honestly fully remember. It seems vaguely familiar, but I had never really had that because most of my babies I've had without an epidural and you know, the baby's coming, the baby's coming. Anyway, so it was overwhelming to me. And I was just scared that I was gonna have to push for a very long time with this big head baby, okay? <laughs> oh, so I'm praying. And the nurse was like, and I was like, is like, am I doing anything? And she was like, yes, everything's going perfect. I was like, okay. So then the midwife came in. Um, and actually I did push maybe a little bit longer than what I've had previously, but it wasn't very long at all. And I even said, cause at one point the nurse told Nathan, look, and he was like, oh wow, he has a lot of hair. Um, so I knew obviously his head was there and in pushing, um, they said, you know, there's his head and usually it's one more push and you know, the baby's out for me. But again, I was scared. <laughs> I was like, what if he's got like big shoulders, but he didn't, it was really one, maybe two more pushes and he, everything went picture perfect. He came out, they put him on my chest, which was so sweet. So he actually was very gray when he was born and he had the most vernix that I have ever seen on a baby. We've had a couple of ours have a lot before. This was even more than that. It was, it was so much for next. Anyway, so they're laying him on me and honestly my heart just kind of stopped because of how gray he looked. But the doctor or the midwife and the nurses were not panicked whatsoever. Um, so that made me feel better. But my heart did stop for a minute and I was like, he's gray. And you can hear that in my birth vlog. Me say, I think I kind of mumbled it some, but then I said, he's pinking up because that made me feel better. So they're, you know, they start wiping him down and he started pinking up and that made me feel so much better. But he 
Camden, I almost said Camden James, oh my goodness, Camden Bow came into the world, gray, <laughs> they laid him on me and everything has just been picture perfect since then. Um, I've shared, you know, more in vlogs and stuff of the stuff that's actually been going on. So it was just so precious to have him on me. I think we laid there for like an hour and a half, maybe two hours. Um, and I was just dying to know how much he weighed. So the nurse had came in. She's like, you can still lay there. I was like, I really, really want to know how much he weighs. And he was seven pounds, 12 ounces. So not our biggest baby. Our biggest baby is seven pounds, 13 ounces. Um, so he's just a couple ounces shy of breaking the field's record. <laughs> um, so I was pleasantly surprised to hear that. So he wasn't, and even holding him, I was like, I mean, he's definitely a bigger baby than like our smaller babies, obviously, but he's not a huge baby like what they were telling me um so it was just the ultrasounds off a little bit or maybe he was actually weighing that and I don't know anyway so but he was absolutely perfect so I have shared some of my recovery and previous vlogs and stuff like that so if y'all just go through like I won't you know spend a whole lot of time on those um on that portion so he was born at seven o'clock at night so like I said contraction started at two Nathan got home. I don't even know what time. We were at the hospital at four. And the hospital's 25 minutes, 30 minutes from our house. So we had to leave here by 3.20, or not 3.20, 3.30, Got there at four. He was born at 7.07. .07. And like I said, it was an absolute whirlwind. Like it was literally just over an hour of being, you know, admitted the IVs and all of that. And I think I had gotten the epidural exactly like at like 5.10. And like I said, he was born at 7.07. .07. So we were hopeful to be discharged at the 24 hour mark, but he, um, when they did the jaundice test, his levels were a little bit too high, which I was super hopeful, but as the day was going on more and more, he was looking a little more and more jaundice to me. So it wasn't a huge shock. So we had to stay overnight again, and he had to sleep on the lights overnight. And they started those, I think the lights like at 9.45 at night, and he was on them, like I said, all night and then part of the next day. But we were able to be discharged the following afternoon. And we had to go back the next day to have another jaundice level check. And he did pass that one. So we didn't have to go back again. Thank goodness. So very thankful for that. Because um, we've had some of our babies have to be admitted again due to jaundice. And Drew actually was on, had to be on like a different set of lights, not the blanket light. He had to be on the stronger one. Um, for just over 24 hours. So this was definitely more mild than what we've had in the past. So I was thankful for that because it just makes it so hard because you can't fully hold your baby the, you know, as much as you want to and stuff like that. But so then we came home and we saw obviously the family. There's a vlog on that too. And it's just been incredible to, incredible to be home as a family of 13. And I'm just so thankful that everything went well and he is doing good. Okay, so some of the commonly asked questions that I had was about the tincture that I had shared in a pregnancy update video. I think I talked about it a little bit in the birth vlog. Um, it is called After Ease for Pregnancy. I got it on Amazon. It's, I forget what herbs are in there, but it actually really did help. It really, it helped a lot. I took it a ton in the hospital. And then actually when we got home, I kind of forgot about it. And then after a few days, I was still hurting pretty bad and I remembered, so I started taking it again. And there was such a huge difference, especially like from stopping taking it <laughs> because I forgot to taking it, it really does help. So if you've never tried that before, or if you've already have, that is definitely a must have for um, after delivery. It tastes terrible. What I did was the nurses, you know how they put your medicine in the little disposable medicine cups? Um, so I saved one of those and I would put a few squirts of the tincture in that, fill it up with water just to kind of dilute it some. And then I would just like chug that again, it tasted terrible, but it really did help. <laughs> so then the other question that we got asked a ton was who does he look like? <laughs> and I think I said that like in one of the videos, I was like, I just don't know who he looks like. I honestly see a little bit of everybody. So sometimes I see Taylor. Sometimes I see Jackson. I see a lot of Nathan. I see a lot of Drew. So Drew looked a lot like he did when he was a baby. Um, Jackson and Logan have lighter hair. Drew is our boy that has dark hair and it hasn't changed. Um, 
I think Jackson's hair was darker whenever he was born though. Excuse me. Anyway, so, but most of you guys say that he looks a lot like Miley. And I do see it some, but I see more of Drew. So if you're asking me, I see a lot of Drew is what I would have to say. So anyways, um, Taylor and Peyton. So it's definitely more favoring Nathan's side than my side. <laughs> um, so then the other question was about his name. So I shared um, his name reveal in the birth vlog as well. So we did decide on Camden Bow. Those were the two names that we had like the absolute best. And we were tossing and turning. We were we were kind of going Bo Camden is what we were like, Bo Camden, okay. But we had kind of wanted a different middle name to match our other boys. But the middle name that Nathan had tried to have for many years was either Danger or Legend, okay. And I wasn't having Danger like at all. And I told him that we could do Legend. But then he kind of changed his mind and didn't really want Legend anymore. Because we were thinking Camden Legend. But Nathan's like, it just doesn't really go that well with Camden. He didn't really want that. You're fine. Um, so, in, like, playing around with the names, one day we were like, well, what if we did Camden? So, we were going Bo Camden. And we were like, Bo Cam. And then Nathan, it was, like, almost simultaneously, we looked at each other and we were like, Cam Bo. Camden Bo. Let's do that. Um, so, a lot of you guys asked if we would call him Cam or Cam Bo. And that's actually what, like, got us to decide on his name was those nicknames is that we would call him Cam um, or Cambo. Of course, I'm calling him Baby Camden right now because he's two weeks old, but <laughs> so we definitely do. Um, it's really cute. Harper calls him Cambo all the time. She goes, hey, little Cambo, or she still calls him the new Borin is what she would say whenever I was pregnant. Is the new Borin baby coming soon is what she would say. So she'll call him the new Borin too. <laughs> All right, so I did get him for you guys. Say hi. See, here he is. Look, that's just a Drew face. Isn't that a Drew face? He's so sweet. So he has been rather fussy. Um, his feeding isn't going picture perfect because he has an upper lip tie, which causes more air and reflux and stuff like that. So that's part of what his issue was this morning. But here he is. I am so thankful that he is here and healthy and everything just went, like I said, well. Um, so I just, again, wanted to say thank you guys so much for all of your support um, and we'll see y'all in the next video.